face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up, guys? And of course, welcome to another episode of Who Was Really Better? And this time, we're looking upon, of course, the two tremendous final bug Pokemon introduced this generation, of course, Generation 7, Boswold versus Feramosa. Now, before even going into this, I'm just going to stretch my personal opinions about these two because the bug and fighting combination has not been done to death. It's actually only it's with Hero Crossing Generation 2 that it's only been the one Pokemon having it. So having two Pokemon introduced like this and being, you know, um, overarching upgrades to what Hero Cross was, but in different fashion, is incredible. I really love these two Pokemon overall, and I'm glad they introduced two super viable Pokemon to be, of course, representing of that type in combination. Now, with that said, this is no easy matchup. There are clear indicators which one does what, and they're both tremendous threats in the high meta for very, very good reasons. They're very, very good Pokemon. In the end of the video, I really hope we can get in terms with which one of these are really, of course, better. So, before we even go over their stats, I really have to go over, of course, the typing combinations, resistances, and weaknesses. Because the typing combination itself is actually one of the best ones in the game. And, of course, resisting, of course, Bug, Dark, Fighting, Grass, Ground, which are very, very common offensive pressure moves. But are weak to Fire, Fairy, Psychic, and are very weak to Flying. Now, very weak to Flying is not necessarily that bad anymore, mainly, of course, because of the Gale Wing reduction and nerf. But it still is worth mentioning that, you know, it's... It's a four times weaknesses, which of course is very, very tough to be dealing with in general, because of course you have to pivot around and actually avoid that situation just in, in general. But the other weaknesses, very, very common, but also resist very, very common offensive pressures too. So, all in all, it's a very good typed combination. Now, if we look over, of course, their stats, it's very clear that they are similar in some fashion, but peaking in different things, uh, but are having very, very high. Tremendous stats really, it actually is quite incredible looking at it, how well rounded they are depending on what they're peak on. You know, of course, Feromosa, 71 in HP, not the most, of course, incredible. Well, of course, Buspo is, of course, peaking there with 107, which is quite a lot for a finance hype. I do believe it's like the second highest one, only like rivaled by Hariyama. And then, of course, it comes to attack and defense. Buspo, of course, has 139, which is incredible. Formosa does have 137, but of course Buswell is slightly stronger and clearly more defensive. Then of course when it comes to defense stats overall, Formosa falls really flat. It's actually lower than Pikachu, with only 37. So the 71 base in of course its HP might not matter all that much. 37 is mixed defenses are very very clear that this Pokemon is not made to take hits ever. <laughs> but it does have a very very high special attack, 137. That's a lot. That's the highest of all the fighting types in the game. It is beyond anything till this generation. It's one of the highest. It's one of the scariest things ever. And it's actually right, very, very incredible. While, of course, Bossfall is really, really falling flat on his special side. You know, of course, a 53 in both his special attack and special defense. So this guy is not made to take special attacks whatsoever. And when it comes to the speed here, Fermosa peaks. A lot. 151, that is, in lack of better terms, the unboosted meta in OU can't rival with this anytime soon or any day soon. Even some Scarfer are not able to have pace of Hermosa. That's how dangerous this speed tier are and definitely one of the best speed tiers in the whole game. Very, very few outspeed this Pokemon. Very, very few are. And of course, Bustle with 79, not a bad speed tier. But, it is of course one of the few that it actually, due to it being slightly slower, it has to rely on its bulk a much much harder than the likes of Feramosa. So that's definitely worth mentioning in comparison to the both of them. Uh, then of course it comes to ability itself, Beast Boost, uh, which of course um, raise your attack or your best stats by 50% or by 1 uh, when you kill a Pokemon. Much like Moxie, but of course a bit more varied depending on what you of course peek on. Fermosa has, of course, both his attack, special attack, and speed, where it actually can get a race on, while Buzzful only can get, of course, this race in either its attack or defense. It actually, due to 79 in speed here, cannot get a speed boost out of, of course, its ultra or beast boost, which kind of is unfortunate. It's worth mentioning that had it had base 80, 
it would have been able to get this. So it's definitely a very well directed speed tier for it because it shouldn't be able to boost its health with speed. So of course with all this said, it's very clear to see which Pokemon does what. Fermosa clearly of glass cannon with a very very high offensive stats with a very very high speed here. While Buzzhull being clearly slower has a lot more bulking build to it. While it's a 107 and based in, in of course his HP does save it somewhat with his low special defense is worth mentioning this physical hits barely affect his one at all actually it's actually very very impressive consider what Buzzful brings to the table so with this said we only can go by default and watch them whether which things they learn and what they can utilize with that in mind so with that said we're gonna of course first go over Fermos as move pool so first and foremost Fermosa gets freaking rapid spins that's that's a perk by one basically it does get a lot of different moves so it gets bounce for example high jump kick being its main stab and its physical attack focus blast we have both lunge and of course bug bus it does get access to the likes of of course ice beam which is a very very good offensive move mainly because usually these pokemons in your lines always have to be relying on stone edge and stuff like that to be able to of course dealing with them having access to ice beam does bring a new kind of new game for it and of course we have the poison jab u-turn so this pokemon clearly has a lot of things going on but the thing that does make it stand out a little bit more is of course that while it doesn't get likes of bulk up or sword stance it does get quiver dance and quiver dance while raising its special defense might not matter too much Racing is already ridiculous, of course, special attack to get it with its speed here. Yeah, that is incredibly dangerous. Usually these sets are actually made with a bit of a lower speed in mind for more special attack. To be able to, of course, once they pull off a quiver dance, be able to stop pressure with, of course, rates of special attack for HKO, making Fermosa very, very, very dangerous as, of course, a late game sweeper health mid game sweeper works too because its attack stats are just that ridiculous. So can Bustolian compare to this move pool? Actually I say yes, and quite a lot actually, while it doesn't have as few key moves as of course Faramosa has, it does have a really really broad move pool and a very very offensive one at that, and quite surprisingly very very effective. First of all, it does get the likes of, of course, Thunder Punch and Ice Punch, which is something that Heracross, for example, has been lacking, making it able to deal with some of the more tougher matchup, you know, of course, your physical ground types and flying. It does get access to Endure and Reversal, it does get, of course, a set of moves such as, of course, Bulk Up, and, of course, Leech Life Lunge, and then we have, of course, Counter onto it, and surprisingly enough, it does get Hammer Arm, Dynamic Punch, Focus Punch, and Super Power. Superpower is usually its main course of attack, and with of course speed boost in mind, it does able to of course cancel out a few of its negativity onto it, but all in all, it does have a very very good overarching move pool. And then of course it gets, of course on the TM side, Stone Edge, Gyro Ball, Earthquake, and of course the likes of a Poison Jab. And other than that, and one very very important move that is something that like stated before, is something that of course finding times are missing, it gets a proper recovery in, of course, Roost, making the stamina of already a very, very bulky Pokemon even more exhilarating. And Buzzwell overall is a very, very good Pokemon with a lot of options of what it can do, and due to its stamina, it can do it a lot. So, one thing that should also be mentioned is, of course, it learns Fell Stinger, which actually, due to, of course, this generation, while not as scared of a move, it does raise, of course, attack if you KO something by 3, and with Beast Boost, you might very well be at full. And what makes that even better is, of course, that due to its massive attacks, that Fell Singer might actually do some damage. So, with all this said, and really, really was looking at it you know, as critically as, as I could, it's very easy to see why Buzzfold, for example, here is one of the best Pokemon in the generation, mainly because it just fits so many teams. It actually can switch into stuff, which is something Fermos is severely lacking. And of course with bulk up, sub, and of course with focus punch in mind, Buzzwell can damage team and damage them quite a lot, making it one of the most well-rounded Pokemon in Doozy generation, and actually a very, very interesting one at that. But, Fermosa's speed tier and of course offensive stats are very, 
very very tough to be dealing with and with of course quiver dance in mind it only keeps on racing the thing is here Formosa really can't do a whole lot and relying on of course on high jump kick and launches is of course main offensive stats um, and of course focus blast as a special oriented stat it's very clear that Firmosa does have a crippling glass cannon thing going on and it actually works almost like hustle in terms of offensive pressure its final stab aren't really that good but with Seamoo introduction this Pokemon has got an honest chance to do really freaking well and all in all due to the Ice Beam in mind and of course Quiver Dance I really have to give the victory to Firmosa and I know that I felt I was a lean into Bustful for quite some time and I actually were or rather, I am impressed by Bustful's move pool. I definitely think is really relevant, and I stated it fits very, very, very many teams. But Feromosa is one of those Pokémon that just can settle a game on its own, and that has to be worth something. Now, Feromosa can't switch in on stuff, and that really has to be stated. It needs pivoting, but it also is one of the Pokémon that isn't easily revenge kill with you turn in mind it is able to get out of a tough situation and it just builds upon it. Fermosa might not be able to take a hit but it sure as hell can give a hit and while Bustful can take the hits it not necessarily is able to deal them back and can be revenge killed in the long run for of course a more unfair matchup. Now I do believe had Bustful had a different speed here, such of course here across of 85 and could actually utilize that to its speed boost or its beast boost I should say and get um, a speed boost Buzzful would have been a much more reliable Pokemon to be using, mainly because that would have made it more complex. As it stands right now, due to the complexity of, of course, Vermosa stats distribution, it is just one of those Pokemon that just can raise. It just becomes stronger as it keeps going, and are definitely able to maintain itself really well. But Buzzful is one of the best Pokemon to do this generation, but but it is compared to the best Pokemon probably in the this generation. Buzzful solves a lot of things with a fighting bug combination hasn't solved for generations. And quite honestly, due to this, it's definitely one of the more complex Pokemon overall. But Feromosa, due to its peaking stats, are just slightly more better more often. So, with that said guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. And I know that I really, really couldn't stray away from the meta. All in all, Fermosa wins because it is better. I really can't deny it. It doesn't mean Buzzle is bad, but Fermosa is just ridiculously good. It is it's just one of those mods. So, what do you guys think? Which Pokemon do you prefer? Make sure to write that down below. And of course, next week, we will look upon this guy's.